Welcome to Beer and Board Games, folks, as we embark into the land of adventure as we play Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion is a fantasy role-playing board game, and what would make me a lot less gloomy right now is a beer. Hey, me too. How about some good old Potosi Golden Ale for our golden adventure into lands heretofore unknown to us? It's uh, brewed in Beer's hometown, actually, is what it says right there. Beer's hometown. I don't know where that is, but I wish I lived there. Potosi makes quality beer. I'm looking forward to it. It's from Mel. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Mel. Thanks, Mel. Tastes a little corn up front, but... It almost has no taste at all. What? Like, when you first taste it, it tastes like nothing, but then corn, yeah. I like it a lot. This is one you could just drink fast. Tonight's episode was sponsored by the makers of Gloomhaven. Thanks, guys. In Gloomhaven, we are each a different character. I am the Demolitionist. I like to blow things up. Quattrolls feel they have a lot to prove. I'm augmented with machines. I got charm and flair, and though I may be small, it doesn't hold me back. I am Inox Hatchet. The Inox are primitive and barbaric people. And so I'm, I don't got a lot going on upstairs, but I got endurance and cunning and quick fists and quick feet. And no one is better than an Inox when throwing an axe. Inox. An axe to the face. And an axe to the face. Emery is a red guard. He's actually a friendly demon. Or at least not a bad demon, a peaceful demon. They used to be bad, uh, but now they've calmed down a lot and they're just like more relaxed demons. And I'm a human void warden. Uh, so humans are, are apparently very common in Gloomhaven in the world there. Void Wardens are people who have dealt with the void, a dark and dangerous place, uh, and they want to protect people from it, but also kind of manipulate it a little bit and, and re use that dark magic to help uh, give powerful boons of healing and stamina. But these gifts usually come at a terrible price. And they're very concerned with bowel health. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Gotta, gotta keep also voiding. Really... So it's my understanding that this game is made up of several different scenarios. And we're going to jump right into scenario three. This is our map, which as we go, we add little stickers that show what locations we've visited. And we've got a couple of items that we purchased at the shop. Hatchet's two special items are a stamina potion and winged shoes. I've got an iron spear, and I've got a power potion, which, which gives me extra attack oomph. Yeah, I took a power potion also. Those seem very useful. And some weathered boots to help me move around. But you can only use them once. Well, I got myself a nice long chain shirt so that I can hopefully, you know, deflect some blows. And we are currently at the Black Ship. After getting our fill of stew and plenty of rest to Sleeping Lion, we start off early in the morning. The first order of business is looking for information on someone named Roland. Oh. He seems to be making a trade out of buying fresh corpses, and you'd love to know why. I know all about Roland. Roland was a warrior in the land of the Midnight Sun with his Thompson gun for hire and fighting to be done. Why did he need corpses, though? Well, he himself was a corpse. Because that son of a bitch Van Owen blew off Roland's head. It's slow going at first, but you eventually find a pair of vermlings down in the sinking market who seem overly interested in cadaver disposal. After some rough persuasion, they cough up that they too are being paid by a man named Roland. Hatchet does not like vermlings. Vermlings are like rat men. You can't trust them. Hatchet would prefer them to not exist. Redguard thinks vermlings are just misunderstood. Demolitionist just likes to blow them up. And Steve thinks we need more information. <laughs> we all have stated an opinion. <laughs> we are going to get onto the black ship and try to find Roland and find out what's going on. 
with the whole situation. We're going to figure out which cards we want to use, two each turn, and then we will figure out initiative, and then in that order, including the enemies, uh, we will take actions. The number in the middle of your cards there, that represents your initiative score, and lower is better. We're not fighting anyone right now, are we? If you look on the ship, there are two zealots standing by this door guarding it. And we've got their attention, so we got to dispatch with them before we go through the door and find out what's on the other side. So how many hexes would I have to move in order to get, like, right in melee range? Uh, you'd have to move one space only. Look over your cards. Remember, you can use one top ability and one bottom ability. So if it would help, I can actually move someone a couple spaces closer pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, that's a, this is something we should talk about totally. If you can move me for free, I actually have a bottom card that attacks, and yeah. then I could also do a top that attacks. You got uh, it. Um, and then I could attack the other guy. Now, uh, there's a difference between these two guys. One is just a regular dude, and he's got six hit points. This one's an elite. it has got a yellow base, which means he's uh, got better abilities. So he's got eight hit points and also does more damage. I have my two cards selected. I kind of want to immediately go, like, just blow up in the middle of both of them. Wouldn't that be a great way to start? Start with a bang? You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm going to do that. Let's take a look at those initiative numbers. Now, you can choose either one if you'd like to go later in the initiative for some reason. I've got a 19. What about you, Redguard? Me? I'm rocking a 38 for my lowest. 15. The Zealots go at 50, so um, who had a higher than 50? Uh, uh, it, it is I, Hatchet. So you're going to be Steve. going after, after the bad guys if you have a higher number than 50. Yes. I always go last. <laughs> the Void Warden is first, then me, then Redguard, then Zealots, then Hatchet. Wait, before we start the battle, Hatchet needs to utter his battle cry. Hurrah! That is the cry of my people. That's like the least threatening battle cry I've ever heard. Hero! Hero. Uh, signs of the Void. I'm playing that one ally uh, within range three may perform shield one and may move two spaces. So I'm going to give that to Red Guard. Dude, that's awesome. Shield one and move? That's right. All right, so that was my top half of a card. My other card, I'm going to play the bottom half, uh, Wicked Scratch, which is loot one, which doesn't matter, and then strengthen someone within range three. So I'm going to go ahead and strengthen Red Guard also. Oh, wow. I feel so strong. That is a wise I plan. So I felt more scared when you said it, that's a wise plan than when you did your battle cry. The Demolitionist clearly is a slightly modified Tiny Dave Matthews. <laughs> Well, he is small. I think you should just go full <laughs> yeah, Tiny Dave right. Matthews for the rest of the, right. of the show. Yeah, what's up? It's Tiny Dave Demolitionist. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to move four. Three, actually. And then I'm going to do the big one. <laughs> All enemies in the targeted area suffer three damage plus a separate modifier for each. These guys are toast. So uh, I'm going to draw from my modifier deck. Two times damage, so that's going to do six damage to him, and that's all of his hit points, so he's already dead. Can't even attack him. Sorry, Emery. Are you shitting me, dude? I'm not currently shitting you. Then I got a minus one, so I only did two points of damage to the other guy. And Steve, I know you gave me a shield one, but you also gave me a strength one. I gave you a strength one as well, yeah. So that increases the damage I deal by one. Uh, mm -hmm. no, it gives you advantage. Oh, oh, cool. On all your attacks till your next turn. Advantage means that he gets to draw two modifier cards and choose the best one. All right, well then, I'm going to use the bottom of one of mine to move two, and I guess just get me as close to the enemy as I can get while also as close to the near nearest door. Yeah, you'll be right next to the door right there. You're good. My top attack is target all adjacent enemies, attack two. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull two cards. I got a plus one and a plus one. So that's, that's exciting. Thanks for that advantage. Uh, I guess I'm doing three damage to that guy. That's all you're doing? Come on, get with the times. Yes, get with the times. That's my battle cry. Get with the times! Haru! We've reached the point of initiative. This is a 77. What's your initiative? Uh, what's your character? A spanker? 
My name is not Spanker, it is Hatchet. Yeah, whatever. Spanker. Spanker, what's your initiative? My father was Spanker. What is there? 71? I got a 64. 64. That means you're first before the basic zealot. Okay, I am doing double throw. Kill him. Well, unfortunately, I can only do two damage to him. Well, plus a separate modifier, so I could do up to three. All right, draw a modifier. Hatchet. The modifier I drew was plus one! Yes! Yeah! He killed him! You saved me, my hero! Demolitionist, you may sit on my shoulder and ride on me like a a little infant. I mean, I don't... I don't know. I, I'll do it for a second if you really want me to, I guess. Hop on up, tiny one. Feels weird. Okay. Oh, something, sm something smells up here. What is that? That is my musk. Oh. The Inox exude a powerful musk after battle. Do you ever wash? Rarely. That is the end of round one. We showed those zealots who's the boss, and it ain't Tony Danza. It's us. It was us all along. Adam, are you too young to know who Tony Danza is? He's a singer, right? Too young. Wasn't he in Full House? Uh, no, that's John Stamos. I think it's great not to know who Tony Danza is. I kind of wished I'd had that knocked out of my head at some point. Did you ever see his movie, Going Ape? With it's oh, yeah. him, and a, him and a bunch of monkeys getting into adventures? <laughs> oh, that premiered at Sundance, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. The first <laughs> Sundance. <laughs> It won the special jury prize at Sundance. We're having a hell of a fun time playing Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. It is available nationwide at Target stores and at your favorite local game store or at JawsOfTheLion.com. Let's go on the boat. The Red Guard moves through a door. Giant vipers and more zealots. Whoa! What? There's a really tough viper at the end. There's two smaller vipers. Vipers have jump. They can jump over things and get you. So can I, because I got the winged shoes. I can't jump over anything. I'm too small. Jump onto my shoulders, little one. No, I don't do that. That's against my feelings. Now you have how many movements left, Red Borg? I had to move three, so I should have two left. Um... All right, where do you want to go? There's a trap you could get next to. Oh! In that case, go ahead and move me two towards that guy. Okay. He's going to move and engage at the end of this turn. Is that what you want? That is what I want. I'm the tank, bro. He's going to attack somebody. Might as well be me. I'm the tank, bro. Okay. I'm a tank, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. Yeah, bro. Come on. I'm a freaking tank. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Right now, I'm going to use the top of Flaming Sickle. Flaming it's Sickle, bro? Of... Yeah, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Flaming dude. Flaming Sickle, bro. Got a range of two. Am I in range? You sure are. Yeah, attack You're... a three, and I pull him one space towards me. So here we go. Oh, I pulled a negative one. Uh, so you're only doing two damage? Only two. Ah, we yeah. Okay, bro. That's pretty weak, bro. But he gets pulled towards me. All right, it took two damage, bro. So I am going to do second wind, and I move five. Hatchet is quick. Look at them long legs. Oh, I admire that. I use stopping power. One enemy within three hexes suffers three damage, plus modifier. What's your modifier, bro? Plus one! That's four damage. He's dead! Haru! All the zealots are going to move plus zero and attack minus one, but they are going to curse if they are able to. They're going to say, fuck it, he shit! We have to determine who is closest. It's looking to me like the Red Guard is going to be the focus of all of the enemies on the entire map. Good. You got um, it, bro. Bring it on, bitches. Yeah, they're moving into the difficult terrain, so it's going to take them a while to get to us. So he's going to go there, and that's going to take him to. The, this uh, giant viper is going to go here, and it's going to take him to. Giant viper is right next to a trap if anyone can, like, sucker him into it, son. Oh, I can do that. I can do it. Oh, yeah. All right, Steve. I finished voiding myself, so now I'm going to move <laughs> four, uh, but I'm going to use my uh, weathered boots to make it a, a five. Oh, move very five nice. Five spaces, yeah. Mm. All right, you're on the door. Now, are any enemies within a range of three of me? One, two, no. No enemies are within the range of three of you. The one that was is dead. 
Well, then I'm out of options, so I'm going to just pass my second card. Steve, you're blocking the goddamn door. I can't get through. I can only move behind you now. I'm holding the <laughs> void back from the door. Blow him up. Don't blow shit up. Blow Steve up. I should have rode on his shoulder. I could have made it. God damn it, I'm stuck here now and I can't do anything. Oh, wait a second. I can loot. I'm still going to move one, two. I'm going to cheat. Okay, that's the end of that round. Man, I can't get any movement. I'm so short. I did need to be carried. This is ridiculous. You know, Emery, um, yeah. you're wearing a black shirt, and you're sitting in a black chair, and you're wearing black headphones. It just looks like the entire bottom of your body is beard. <laughs> you're a head on a beard. I'm like Cousin It. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask me how I know who Cousin It is, but not Tony Danza. I won't. I'm going first. The first thing I'm going to do is the top card of Swift Strength. So it's, an, it's a ranged attack. It's got a range of two. And I can target two. I get to pull them one as well. as do Oh, damage. you get to choose where you pull them? Uh, they, it has to be towards me. Okay, well, towards you is on top of a trap that does three damage. Yeah! I pulled a plus two! Ooh! So that is four damage plus the trap damage. So that's gonna be seven damage to this giant viper. He goes on the trap. These giant vipers are weak. He only had three hit points. We will be dining on viper tonight. I hit the other guy as well and he gets pulled one towards me. This time I got a minus one. Now I get to do my bottom card. It is a move three and all attacks targeting you have disadvantage this round. Oh, you should move in right between these two guys and they'll both be like, you're our focus. And then they won't be able to hit you because they'll have disadvantage. That's Marked. what I'm going to do. I'm going to move there and I'm going to activate my chain mail, which gives me shield one for the rest of the turn. The zealots are up. They have been bamboozled by this friendly demon. They don't know what's happening. What do we do? They try to attack him, but he's shielded. Minus one to zealot number one, which is going to do zero points of damage to the red guard. <laughs> it's laughable. These guys are laughable. So the next red guard is also at disadvantage. Is that what you're trying to tell All him? attacks. All right. Well, he would have had a plus one, but unfortunately, disadvantage, no damage. Oh! Oh! oh. A real bro does not go... Oh. Oh. A real bro would be like, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, these zealots over here are going to move. This one goes two and moves on to difficult terrain, blocking its fellow brother zealot. I imagine that exchange to go something like this. Block him away, bro! Oh, sorry, were you trying to say something? We got one, you bro! <laughs> That's these zealots in a nutshell, I think. They, uh, they don't have their shit together. I am doing disorienting barrage. Say what? Up to three enemies within three hexes suffer one damage, plus a separate modifier for each. If you want to attack three guys, you have to move two, but if you just want to attack two guys, you can just move one. Okay, I'll just attack two guys then. So my modifiers are plus zero. All right, so that's two damage. And then my other modifier is a plus one, so that other enemy gets two damage. Number five, Elite Zealot is on the board with two damage. And they have disadvantages on all their attacks until the end of their next turn. Ooh, their next turn. Damn, Emery, you're basically invincible at this point. Well, if these guys even survive, which I kind of doubt it. I can't get anywhere close to them. My turns are going to be jokes. I blew my wad at the first turn, and I'm done. Frosthaven is a sequel to Gloomhaven, and it made $13 million on its Kickstarter campaign. It's available for pre-order at the link that's in the description, and it's going to ship next year. Frosthaven. On my turn, I'm going to stand there and just wave my hands around. Woo! Yeah, go, guys! Yeah, you can do it! Yeah, you kill those monsters! Okay, then I'll do my turn out the lights, attack three, range three. Uh, plus modifier. So, my modifier is plus one. I'll hit it for four damage. Nice. That is exactly what you needed to kill the zealot. You've been voided. Kill the zealot. Kill, kill the zealot. Kill the zealot. <laughs> we each only have two cards left. We gotta all take a rest after this. Let's see what happens. 
All right, I've got a ranged attack. One enemy within three hexes suffers three damage plus modifier. Yeah, that sounds good. What's the modifier yet, bruh? Modifiers plus one! I swear to God, I'm not cheating. I'm just drawing these from the deck. That's four damage. That's going to put number six, Zealot, at six damage. He's uh, an, an epic dude, though, so he's still got two health left and continues to survive to this day. What an asshole. Right? And this giant viper who's going to move next to Emery and attack him. All right, the giant viper gets... Two times damage oh, with poison. No. Six damage to you, Red Guard, Invincible Red Guard. And I'm poisoned. And you're poisoned. That's a lot of damage, bro. All attacks targeting me have plus one. Yeah. Poison. Okay. Po yeah. po po poison. <laughs> Emery is poisoned. How many hit points you got left, Red Guard? I have four hit points left. Damn. I'm going to do close to the abyss, which lets me uh, heal up to two targets next to me within a range of two. But get this, any ally who removes poison with this heal gains bless. <gasps> oh, yeah. He's got a really good chance of criticals now. Now that uh, Red Gord is blessed, I'm going to use lure of the void. And I'm going to use that red guard within range three to perform an attack six action against that monster next to him. Attack six? That's right. This is one of my burn cards. So once I use it, it's gone. All right, here we go. Times two. Wow. You just cut him in half. Now it is the red guard's actual turn. I'm going to use my desert knight attack two, target one enemy within two hexes, and I disarm them. If you do three damage, he's dead. Oh, minus one. Ah. Emery didn't kill the Viper. He's a gross failure of a man. That doesn't reflect negatively on the rest of us, just on him. We had a great time playing Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven? Gloomhaven? If only I could have gotten up there with my tiny little legs, I could have taken that snake out. No problem. Would have been no problem for me. Hatchet. If only I'd ridden on Hatchet's shoulders. Hatchet. I learned a lesson today, folks. You gotta ride the big man when you get a chance. Why is this little man impervious to me? Why are you chopping at me, big boy? Why do I keep missing? Danny Bell told me that next week he plans to shake up the system with some serious ba balls. He's gonna freaks out. <laughs> and he's gonna steal some mutton from a corn dog vendor and shoot his load and pour, pe peel out of a, a diner. <laughs>